Hi everyone. Good afternoon. In this video, we are going to discuss the nature of a power series, nature of the power series of a complex variable. Before that, we'll start with uh, a small recapitulation of the nature of a series of real numbers sigma u n. As we all know, a series of real numbers sigma u n can either be convergent, divergent, or oscillatory, depending on whether the sequence of nth partial sums Sn is convergent, divergent or oscillatory. Here the sequence of nth partial sums is Sn where Sn is given by u1 plus u2 plus etc plus un. So as uh, according as this uh, sequence is convergent, divergent or oscillatory, the series of real numbers sigma un is convergent, divergent or oscillatory. In particular, if each of the terms of the series is positive, then such a series is called a series of positive terms. And there are some standard tests for uh, checking whether the given series of positive terms is convergent or divergent. Of course, we do not have the case of oscillation, oscillatory behavior for a series of positive terms. In particular, the series sigma 1 by n to the power p is called the p series and is known to be convergent for any value of p greater than 1 and is known to be divergent for any value of p less than or equal to 1. Here p represents a positive real number. So as long as p is greater than 1, the series is convergent and if p is less than or equal to 1, the series is divergent. We also have two types of comparison tests which come in very handy when it comes to checking whether a series of positive terms is convergent or divergent. These uh, tests are given by this comparison test. The first comparison test says if two series sigma, U, sigma an and sigma bn are series of positive terms and uh, an is less than or equal to bn for all n then as long as sigma bn is convergent sigma an is also convergent and as long as sigma an is divergent sigma bn is also divergent. So as long as an is less than or equal to bn, sigma bn is convergent implies sigma an is convergent and sigma an is divergent implies sigma bn is divergent. The second comparison test is also known as the limit comparison test and is given by this uh, statement. Suppose we have two series sigma an and sigma bn which are series of positive terms. Suppose c takes the value limit of n to infinity an by bn then if this limiting value which is c is positive and finite then either both the series converge or both of them diverge. So this limiting value as long as this limiting value is finite and uh, positive then both the series behave alike is what this particular series test, uh, test says. Moving further we also have a very important uh, test for uh, a series of positive terms which is known as the DLMH ratio test. It says if limit of un plus 1 by un as n tends to infinity equals L then the series converges if L is less than 1 and diverges if L is greater than 1. However, this test fails if the value of the limit is equal to 1. We also have something called absolute convergence and conditional convergence of a series of real number sigma un. A series sigma un is said to be absolutely convergent if sigma mod un is convergent and uh, if sigma un is convergent but sigma mod un is not convergent then we say that the series is conditionally convergent. So basically a series which is convergent but not absolutely convergent is called a conditional convergent series. However, we also have a result which says that every absolutely convergent seri uh, series is convergent but not vice versa. Now these are some results which are to be remembered when we have to discuss the series of uh, complex variable. Now as we have a series of real numbers sigma un, when it comes to a series of complex uh, functions we have sigma un of z and uh, we discuss two particular types of convergence as we discussed earlier. Sigma un of z which is given by sigma uh, uh, sorry u1 of z plus u2 of z and so on of complex functions is said to be absolutely convergent if the series of absolute values sigma mod un of z is convergent and uh, if sigma un of z is convergent but sigma mod un of z is not convergent then the series is said to be conditionally convergent also 
Every absolutely convergent series is conditionally convergent. However, the converse is not true. Fine. We will now move on to the definition of power series, which is central to this discussion. A series of the form sigma a n into z minus a to the power n, which is equal to a naught plus a one into z minus a plus a two into z minus a whole square and so on, is called a power series in z minus a. In this this particular power series, if we choose z equals a, obviously the series converges. However, it is not necessary that the series converges for any other value of z. Because of this, we see that there exists a positive real number capital R such that the series converges for any value of z with mod z minus a less than r and diverges for any value of z with mod z minus a greater than r. This is supposed to be greater than r. Such the such a value of r is called the radius of convergence, and uh, the expression mod z minus a equals r, the region as such. This is basically a circle with center at a and radius equals r. This is called the circle of convergence or radius of region of convergence of the power series. I repeat, r is called the radius of convergence, and uh, mod z minus a equals r is called the circle of convergence or region of convergence of the power series. Now, to understand this, we'll uh, discuss a few examples. Yeah, the first example is this. The first problem: prove that the series sigma z power n by n into n plus one converges absolutely for mod z less than or equal to one. Here, comparing this with uh, the series sigma y n into z minus y power n. We have y n of z or u n of z equals z power n by n into n plus one, and we are looking for absolute convergence. So we'll take the series of positive terms only. So modulus of y n of u, uh, absolute uh, convergence is what we are discussing. So modulus of u n of z equals modulus of this whole thing because n is a positive integer. This will reduce to mod z power n by n into n plus one. Right now, as we can see here, we are supposed to show that. This series converges absolutely for mod z less than or equal to one. So we will choose mod z less than or equal to one. So for mod z less than or equal to one, modulus of u n of z will be less than or equal to one by n into n plus one. Now, if you look at this expression, this can be compared to a P series sigma one by n square. So if we choose v n equals one by n square, we see that modulus of u n is less than or equal to v n. And uh, we know that this sigma, uh, this series sigma v n equal to sigma one by n square is convergent for, for convergent because p is equal to two. Therefore, the given series is also absolutely convergent for this mod z less than or equal to one. Right. So basically, when we whenever we are discussing the nature of a series of complex functions, we will have to use either the comparison test or Probably the real limit is shortest. Fine. So now we'll move to the next problem. Yeah. Find the region of convergence of the series sigma n factorial into z power n. Also find its radius of convergence. So as we all know, the region of convergence is basically the region where the given series is going to be convergent, and the radius of convergence is the value of r such that modulus of z minus y. Less than r implies the series is convergent, and modulus of z minus y greater than r ensures that the series is divergent. Here, y will turn out to be zero, so u n of z will be n factor into z power n, so that modulus of u n of z will be n factor into modulus of z to the power n. So here, because we have a factorial term in the u n of in u n of z, we will use the real limit ratio test, and we'll come consider limit of U n plus one of z by U n of z. So U n plus one of z is basically n plus one factorial into modulus of z to the power n plus one. So this is what we have in the numerator, and U n of z is n factorial into z power n. So simplifying n plus one factorial by n factorial will turn out to be n plus one, and modulus of z to the power n plus one by mod z power n will be mod z. Now, when n approaches infinity, this expression approaches infinity. As long as z is not equal to zero, and uh, we know that this is obviously greater than one, and if z is equal to zero, 
then no matter what n is the value of the limit will be zero so accordingly by dlm at ratio test the series is absolutely convergent for z equal to zero and divergent for z not equal to zero right so accordingly because the series is absolutely convergent only for z equal to zero and divergent for all other values of z we conclude that the region of convergence is z equal to zero and because the region of convergence is just z equal to zero the radius of convergence will be capital r equal to zero right another example find the region of convergence of the series sigma z plus 2 to the power n minus 1 by n plus 1 the whole cube into 4 power n also find its radius of convergence here once again we start with un of z un of z will be z plus 2 to the power n minus 1 by n plus 1 the whole cube into 4 power n so that modulus of un of z will be mod z plus 2 to the power n minus 1 by n plus 1 the whole cube into 4 power n so here once again we'll have to go for the generalized uh, dlm at ratio test so we'll consider limit of un plus modulus of un plus 1 of z by un of z so un plus 1 of z will be z plus 2 to the power n by n plus 1 n plus uh, 2 to the power uh, 3 into 4 to the power n plus 1 so substituting and simplifying is going to give us limit of mod z plus 2 as we can see here we have z plus 1 to, uh, mod z plus 2 to the power n minus 1 and we'll have a mod z plus 2 to the power n so that will leave us mod z plus 2 and we'll have n plus 1 the whole cube in the numerator and n plus 2 the whole cube in the denominator and we'll be left with 4 i have uh, skipped a few steps here to write this expression so step by step substitution for un plus 1 of z and un of z and simplification will give us this expression and when we apply limits mod z plus 2 by 4 can be taken outside and when we apply the limits we see that this whole expression will turn out to be 1 so that we will be left with mod z plus 2 by 4 as the limit now this is the limit of models of un plus 1 of z by un of z, un of z. so by dlm at ratio test if this value is less than 1 the series is convergent and if this value is greater than 1 the series is divergent so accordingly the series is absolutely convergent if this value is less than 1 that is mod z plus 2 less than 4 and divergent for this value greater than 1 that means mod z plus 2 greater than 4 however the test fails when mod z plus 2 equals 4 because when mod z plus 2 equals 4 this value will be 1 and dlm at ratio, ratio test fails so what should be done when we when we have mod z plus 2 equal to 4 so we'll have to choose this condition mod z plus 2 equals 4 and we'll have to see what is mod even of z so doing that as we can see here if we choose mod z plus 2 equals 4 this expression will reduce to mod un of z equals as we can see here this will be 4 to the power n minus 1 by n plus 1 to the power 3 into 4 to the power n right so here 4 to the power n plus 1 by 4 to the power n will give us 1 by 4 into n plus 1 the whole cube once again this can be compared with the p series sigma 1 by n cube which is convergent because of which this series is also convergent so by comparison test using p series this series is going to be absolutely convergent when mod z plus 2 equals 4 so to conclude the given series is absolutely convergent for mod z plus 2 less than or equal to 4 and divergent for mod z plus 2 greater than 4 so this will ensure that the region of convergence will be the region of convergence of the given series will be mod z plus 2 less than or equal to 4 and the radius of convergence will be r equals 4 because for mod z plus 2 less than or equal to 4 the series is convergent and greater than 4 it is divergent so this will be the radius of convergence for the given series okay so these are some examples that uh, I want to discuss in this particular presentation. So go through these examples and uh, prepare yourself for the examination. Thank you.